this is just past its date. They've changed the branding on this too, so they've reduced that. Cheapest breakfast going is cereal. We've got the fancy pasta here, but this is also reduced, which is why I've got a couple of packets of it. Fiona works five days a week, regularly misses meals, and always buys discounted food. Whenever I go around supermarkets, I try and pick up whatever the reduced sticker deals are. Yet having enough money to feed her two children still requires hours of planning, preparation and scavenging. I don't really think that there's a switch off from it, which is why I try and avoid supermarkets now. If I go into supermarkets, I definitely go into hunter mode and think about what stickers I can get, what's on offer. As the cost of living bites, three meals a day has become a luxury for millions. To help, Fiona runs a community kitchen at this school in Halifax. Matt Perry is the head teacher. This is where the magic happens. Um, Donated food is transformed into free meals. It's about 300 meals a week we make. We've helped probably over 700 families and you know hundreds of staff who get to take the food as well. Do you think it's the responsibility of schools and teachers to provide services like this community kitchen? I think in the strictest definition, no. You know, schools remit, my remit is to improve educational outcomes. I think what we're finding is more and more, it's not just the families that are known that you've worked with, it's more and more families saying, look, can we just have some help? Can we have a conversation? You're seeing the signs in young children. <laughs> Lines on this side, pizzas on second aisle. The charity, the Food Foundation, has tracked the UK's food insecurity levels since the start of the pandemic. In recent months, it's detected an alarming rise in cases and shared its findings with Newsnight. This data suggests nearly one in five households in the UK ate less food or skipped meals in September. That's an estimated 9.7 million adults but it's thought it's families with children who are struggling the most. As this graph shows, since April, food insecurity has increased more amongst this group compared to households without children. That's a 50% rise in just five months. The government has invested 24 million pounds into offering free school breakfasts in England. Nearly two million pupils are also eligible for free school meals, but charities say the current threshold is too low and should be extended to all families on universal credit. Fiona would welcome that extra support. It would make the difference of 20 pounds a week, which I'd be able to use in different ways, which is just would be so good. There will be people who will hear millions of children in the UK are living in food poverty and they won't believe it. What would you say to them? Oh, it's very real. It's very real. If I'm on an OK income and my kids are still struggling and I'm still struggling, then there's so many people that are worse off. Research shows families with children have more outgoings, but are less likely to have savings and are more likely to be in debt. While the majority of parents are in work, campaigners have told us most are unable to increase their hours further. The former Children's Commissioner says the government must now treat deprivation as a national emergency. Child poverty and poverty generally, I think, is of such a, a, a level of crisis at the moment that the country needs to take this seriously. I would like to see COBRA meetings you know, reflecting the magnitude of the situation for real families and children being held on a regular basis to look at what's happening and to find solutions and to deliver those solutions. You started working with children in the 1980s. You were the Children's Commissioner for six years. How significant is this data? I don't remember seeing it this bad. Those children are going to have much poorer life chances. They're going to get much uh, poorer educational outcomes, have worse jobs and have to be a much greater pull on the public purse in the future. A government spokesperson told us measures are in place to help the most vulnerable cope with rising prices. This includes millions of households receiving payments of at least £1,200 this year. We've come to meet Phoenix, who has health problems and is unable to work. Hi, how are you? I'm Anna. I'm Phoenix. Nice, nice to meet you. you. How are you? Her eldest, 15-year-old Erin, helps take care of her three younger siblings. Two years ago, we were able to afford more than we do now, and Mum's still able to pay, like, for the gas and electric and all that. But now, 
well, can't really, can't really do that now. Sometimes Erin skips meals or eats less food so the younger siblings don't go hungry. Sometimes I'll be sad because I didn't get to have what they did, but then I'll be happy because at least they've gotten to eat their food. I do believe mum cries sometimes because she lays there at night saying, right, tomorrow's the weekend, can't take the kids out, you know, not be able to do anything fun with them. Ah. Money worries weigh heavily on young shoulders, and sometimes it can all get too much. And I just feel upset because explaining what everyone has to go through in these types of situations, I know other people go through it even worse than us, and it's just, it's horrible, it's not fair. It's just, it's affecting people's lives really badly.